All right, this is a quick review of a um, Gen 5 L8T swap uh, in place of a L83 or L86. Uh, so this is um, the 6.6 .6 liter Gen 5 motor found in uh, current models of three quarter ton heavy duty trucks. Uh, it is a Gen 5 motor that was you know first introduced into the trucks in 2014. Uh, there's been a little bit of changes here and there, but um, I just want to go over everything that I found that's the same and everything I found that is a little bit different that may um, help you for a uh, swap. Uh, so first of all, um, the L8T uses the larger L86 intake manifold. It's directly the same uh, as the L86 6.2 liter manifold, so manifold and throttle body are different. Um, if your truck has a 5.3 and you want to run a factory intake, you do have to get uh, this uh, air intake box, um, or if you want to run an aftermarket cold air intake. But if you want to run, um, if you have a 5.3, then just get the 6.2 uh, intake manifold. The, the coupling here is larger diameter for the larger throttle body. Uh, another thing to talk about is uh, PCV uh, crankcase ventilation uh, with the L8T it is a little bit different um, the L8T has a fresh air intake on this side and that goes across the engine and then it comes up here on the driver side valve cover and then this hose here was connected from the driver side valve cover over into the intake manifold port. Um, one thing about the L8T though is the valve cover is the exact same valve cover except it has a smaller port on it. See right here. So this was the L8T valve cover. And then I just bought a, uh, a uh, core L80 or L83, L86. Um, valve cover to basically hook up the same PCV system as uh, found on the the 14 to 18 trucks. So the 14 to 18 trucks have two fresh air ports. You've got fresh air coming in here into this valve cover and then fresh air here coming into this valve cover. I don't have the hoses hooked up yet. And then the crankcase gases come up the valley cover and then uh, out the, the, the VLOM the uh, valley cover, the the lifter oil manifold, and then up into here. Um, and then this is the, this line here is the EVAP system. And there's the EVAP solenoid down in here. That's exactly the same as uh, L83, L86. Um, let me pull this off here. So you can see, I have the Texas Speed um, Valley cover on there, and I think I'm going to swap it back out. I'm I'm not. It, it's okay, but the the problem I have with it is the pad for the high pressure fuel pump mount is is thinner by almost thirty thousandths of an inch. So you're getting thirty thousandths more preload of the fuel pump. I think it's fine as far as the fuel pump still going to operate in that realm, but um, I don't know. So I think I'm going to swap it back out for a VLOM and just put the uh, a plug in the oil port so it doesn't get any oil feed. Um, and then also, you know, like this here is the plug for the VLOM, so I got to figure out something to do with this. I mean, just let it hang or cover it up, but. You know, one of these pens is hot all the time, and then you have the four grounds for the four solenoids. So, but uh, oil pressure sensors there, there, and then there is um, this uh, check valve right here. This is the GM part number for that check valve. There, that plugs into there, and then this is just the the six two um, port there. So you have your your dirty crankcase vent coming up into here and it gets consumed in there. 
Um, next thing is the accessory drive. I put the L83, L86 accessory drive on it because this is going in an 18 Sierra. Um, it bolted right up. The only thing that's a little bit different is, well, this front water manifold has a typical, you know, one, two, three, and, you know, one, two, three bolts that bolt for the two water ports. Then there is an additional bolt down under here, the tensioner. This is the seventh bolt that holds this water manifold on and it goes back into the block and it's kind of hard to see here but for some reason on the iron blocks they moved that hole inboard a little bit and there was no hole in the block um, for this bolt here so I guess you could just leave it out or what I did was uh, just drilled it out and tapped it uh, I believe it was M8125 um, there was you know, I looked and there's no um, no ports or anything back there, so um, it, it went right in. I think it was like 20-something millimeters deep, 22 millimeters deep, threaded it in, then the bolt goes in, so it went in fine. Um, all the bolts over here are the same, uh, even this alternator bracket, everything bolted up fine. I don't have the air conditioning compressor on yet, but, you know, this is the belt, the stretch belt for the air conditioning compressor. I'm just... Probably just going to leave that hanging in the truck. So that way, the, the, the truck is a 1, 2, 3, 4 YF, and um, I don't want to mess with uh, pulling the charge out of it just for the fact that it's expensive for a 1, 2, 3, 4 YF. So, um, this, everything was the same with the, the harmonic balancer. This is the LAT harmonic balancer. Um, it doesn't have the, um, the pulley for the vacuum pump, which we'll talk about here next. So, you know, obviously the LAT doesn't have the vacuum pump pad that is typically, you know, right here mounted. And um, the only thing, I, you know, I, I, I so I still got to figure out what I'm going to do for the, the brake booster line, the vacuum source for it. Um, I think I got something planned uh, with you know, this solenoid valve here, I think I'm going to make a, a manifold that'll plug into here that then the, the EVAP solenoid will plug into. And then I have a vacuum pump right here. I think I'm going to, you know, take this off of here. And this has a little spring and a check ball in it as well. But I'll, I'll probably make something for that to bolt into to, uh, and then, you know, normally, like, the, the vacuum line comes down in here for the brake booster. I think it'll kind of fold over here, and you might have to trim it, but then it'll plug in right here. Then we'll get a nice vacuum source right behind the, the throttle body. Um, so this is a 2022 LAT. It's a uh, delivery mile motor. It's got, like, 10 miles on it. I bought it out of a, a dismantler. Uh, Stricker's Automotive, they're in Batavia, Ohio, so they, uh, they were, I mean, they were a pretty reasonable price to pay 5800 bucks for the engine uh, out the door. Uh, I had to go pick it up, that was no shipping or anything, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. My, really the only complaint I have is their warehouse is pretty damp. I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's not like wet, it was just uh, high humidity in there and, you know, all the Kind of like the bare surfaces of the block were kind of rusty, but this could have been from GM too. But I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just me being picky. So, um, see what else? Uh, wiring harness. I uh, bought a new wiring harness from GM just because, and you know, my truck's got 180,000 miles on it, and it's an 18, but it's you know typical GM wiring harness for all this loom gets brittle and fractures and stuff and by the time i get that off of the truck it's a, it's going to be a mess so i think i'm just going to you know when i pull the 5.3 out i'm just going to leave the harness on it um this harness here was 250 bucks from gm so um i mean everything snapped right into place just like it was from the factory um the only thing kind of goofy was on the L8T block, the knock sensor is moved. 
So you kind of see there's a little bit of extra loop here. The knock sensor is more up here on the aluminum blocks than it is on the iron blocks. And that kind of leads to the next thing, which is the dipstick tube here. I swapped out the oil pan for an L83, L86 oil pan. Um, I think, I, I read some comments somewhere where people said, you know, like there was some wiring harness issues in the front and um, some, and I was a little worried about, you know, clearing the four wheel drive stuff. But here's the, the L8T oil pan. You know, I, I think the front of it, everything that I was seeing looks the same as far as all, you know, the harness snaps into here. Uh, it is one piece. You know, it's a little different. It, it may fit. People might have put them in the trucks and they fit fine, but, you know, I wasn't sure. So I went ahead and um, swapped it out. I mean, a new oil pan was like 100 bucks on eBay for a core that was, you know, on a core engine never used. Uh, but yeah, the LAT oil dipstick hole is right here. So, you know, it comes up. The dipstick comes up here on the passenger side, which is where all the intake stuff is. So, you know, putting the L86 and the dipsticks over here back where it is from the factory. I did have to kind of massage the, the dipstick tube a little bit right in here to get it around the uh, knock sensor. So I, I think it's fine. Not everything seems to work, and you know, it's got the O-ring seals in there. Uh, but yeah, this is the oil folder off of the. Uh, I was gonna go ahead and prime it here. This is you know factory GM oil folder from that L8T. It's got a dent in it, but probably just gonna prime this engine here on the stand before I put a new filter in it. But uh, yeah, I got the bypass. I got to put you know, the oil cooler lines and stuff in it. You see here, Stricker puts their little uh, temperature. Tattletails on the engine everywhere. There and there, and there's one on the other head. Uh, exhaust manifolds. I I don't know if they're gonna work or not. I mean, the they look different as far as like the the guarding and stuff's a lot bigger here. But looking at, I don't have a set laying here, but you know, looking at the interface, they look the same. So they may work or they may not. If not, I'll just swap the manifolds over. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, so you can see the kind of the harness here. Obviously, you know, the harness all snaps into place down in here just fine. Um, obviously, you know, without the pump here, this this mount's not going to be, you know, there's a little friction clamp here to go into the side of the pump. Um, but everything else mounted up, you know, through here. What not. Um... The side over here, um, everything fits in the place here. This is just a random starter head laying around. I was going to throw the flywheel on it uh, and just crank it over with a battery here. Uh, probably pull the plugs. That way I can just get it nice and primed and make sure all the oiling and stuff's fine. I know I had the oil pan off and want to make sure I got all the oiling stuff right. I think I did an okay job. See the ceiling coming out of there. Um, let's see what else. I think that's about it. I mean, everything else just bolted right up, you know. Um, I guess one of the re I mean, to go over why I am going to do the LAT is, um, um, well, I got, you know, the, the, the extra torque and, you know, there's all this other talk about, you know, iron block, aluminum block. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of, of a weight penalty on the truck, but I don't, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, six, six does make more torque than the six, two. You can run, um, you know, it's a lower compression. You can run, um, you know, 87 octane in it, not a problem. Um, I don't know. The horsepower numbers are pretty close, but, uh. You know, I, I, I'm going to like the torque value of this engine more than the 6.2. Um, and it was a little bit cheaper. You know, I, this is a 2022. This is a brand new engine. Um, you know, 
yeah, like the rods, the wrist pin, you know, for the, the geometry of the piston and the rod and everything. You know, GM had to make a thinner wrist pin and a thinner, you know, small end rod. I'm not worried about that. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I may boost at one point in time. We'll see. Right now, I just, you know, have a daily driver 2018 Sierra Crew Cab short bed. And um, it's got 180,000 miles on it. You know, knock on wood, it's DOD's been chucking away for, you know, all that time. Been fine. No noise out of the valve train. You know, obviously I take good care of my stuff and oil change. Um, this my truck does have a L90, eight L90, eight speed behind it. Uh, same thing, 180 thousand miles on it. Torque converter is kind of acting up a little bit when it gets hot. I've you know I've done the bypass and the fluid change and everything. Um, I'm sticking with the eight L90 though. I'll rebuild it and put a converter and tune it to get all the slip out of it. I think it's a good transmission. Just needs a little bit of love so but um yeah that's basically everything that you know that i found so far to to get the to get this engine in a uh, 14 to 18 truck so feelings all the same uh i think the high pressure pump they changed something on the later model trucks between like a four and a five i can't i don't know what the detail is i have to look it up but you guys probably know better than me. Uh, I know that this, the high pressure fuel pump, uh, that came on this truck is the same pins and everything as I believe the 27 and 2018 have the different, um, high pressure fueling system, but everything snapped into place. You know, this is all the L8 T, um, uh, fuel stuff. Um, you know, the wiring harness came in, everything snapped into place. This is the L8T cover. It's the same part number as the L8662 stuff. Um, flywheel. Uh, this had, this truck came with the 6L90, the original truck. Uh, so I had to swap the flywheel out for the, um, I, the, uh, six bolt flywheel for the six bolt converter, which it's. All right, here. This is a six bolt converter, torque converter for 8090. And this was a flywheel that came on the, the L8T. One, two, three bolts were attached for the torque converter, three bolt converter. So, um, yeah, I think that's yeah, the um, other parts. This is the L8T valley cover here. I pressure fuel pump pad and then where the mount for the lines you can see there's nothing in there DOD wise there's no vacuum port here um, oil pressure sensor here and then there's a plug here and then we actually make or I make a, a volume plug it's got o-rings and stuff on it. this is just a prototype here but that goes down in there on a on a volume to uh, block off oil flow so um, yeah, I think that's about it. And what I've found out so far, I'm I'm gonna try to get this in the truck in the next couple of weeks here, uh, get it running and tuned up, and see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, I'm I think this is a, a great little swap, and hopefully it's the the truck that should have been. So from GM with the the six six. So any questions? I mean, you can try to hit me up, and I'll try to answer as best as I can. But I'm just a Shade tree mechanics. <laughs> so, yeah.